morning and welcome back to Keep Moving with the Senior Center. I'm Amy Beck, the Director of Senior Services and Director of the Senior Center, and with me is Ashley Shaheen, the Assistant Director. Uh, we're here to let you know that, that while the doors of the Senior Center are closed still, uh, we are still available to help and to bring you all sorts of virtual programs. And so we have a really exciting show for you today. Uh, but we want to let you know that this is a live show. So please call in. Uh, we want to hear from you. If you dial 508-435-7887, uh, we'll be able to, to talk with you. And so feel free to call in. This is a chance to ask questions or just to say hi to some of your friends. Um, don't hesitate. We'd love to have you say hi. I don't know about anyone else, but the sun today or lack of sun today is driving me a little nuts. So I'm hoping that that changes in the next couple days. But today, to begin with, we have Heather Backman, of the director of the Hopkinton Public Library, to tell you a little bit about what kind of programs and, act, and uh, can't say activities yet, I guess, but programs are going on with the library. Hi, Heather. How are you? Hi, Amy. I'm doing well. How are you? Just fine, thanks. Good. Yeah, I actually I don't mind the rain. My garden it could you really use it? So <laughs> true. <laughs> um, yeah, I I really just wanted to come and and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I wanted to to make sure people know that just like the senior center is still uh, here for people, just in a different way. The library is still here for people, uh, just in a little bit of a different way too. And. Um, we are not answering our phones live, but we are checking our voicemail. So you can still call us, leave a message, and we will get back to you. You can email us. Um, we have a new chat, a librarian service. If you go on our webpage from 10 to 5, Monday through Friday, there's a big blue uh, speech bubble icon. And if you click on that, you can actually just type back and forth with us in real time. Um, we're still doing events online. You know, if people go uh, on our website, there's a tab at the top that says calendar, and we list what we're doing there. Um, so, you know, we're offering talks, we're offering programs for all ages, um, children through adults. Um, we're continuing to offer things like our chat and shoot book group, which uh, doesn't require you to have read a particular book. People just get together once a month and talk about what it is that they're reading right now. Um, and then, of course, we've still got all of the electronic offerings that we had before the, the pandemic, and we're continuing to expand those collections. So we have ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, newspapers. We do have access to things like the Boston Globe, New York Times um, online through a database. Um, and if people aren't sure how to get set up with that, they can reach out to us, and we're happy to, to provide some, some help on getting in. Um, so yeah, we're still here. We're sharing news on, on our social media, our website, our e-newsletter. I know people have been uh, eager to hear about when we may accept returns again or check things out again. And you know, we will be working on that once we get staff back in the building, which is our current project. Um, but we'll be putting information about all of that and what's happening with that out on you know, all of our, our own communication channels as soon as we have news. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I get really excited when I drive by the library because sometimes it looks like the lights are on and I'm like, I know they're not open yet, but the lights are on. But it's really nice to see the hearts in the windows. And and I don't know if you want to mention that and, and what that's been all about. Yeah, that's the Heart Hopkinton project. And I will admit that we um, we took the idea wholesale from Worcester. So thank you, Worcester. <laughs> but, um, you know, we just thought you know, in this time we're all apart, but we're, we're still all connected and, and the whole community cares. It's such a wonderful community. So uh, we ask and encourage people to put a heart in their window, put up a message of hope if they want to put up a message and share it on social media and tag it with Heart Hopkinton. Um, and, you know, as soon as we launched that, it was so gratifying. We did, you know, let the rest of the town departments know first and the response was so immediate. Everybody wanted to participate and put things up and, you know, I've been in town on occasion and driving around seeing the hearts in the windows in town offices and businesses and homes is really a wonderful thing. So we, we are so grateful for everybody who's been joining us in that. Well, whether you borrowed the idea from Worcester or not, it's been a great addition to Hopkinton. So I'm excited to see it. And like I said, I know I speak for everybody. We will be very happy when the library is able to be open as well as I know everyone in the library wants to get back and, and yes. see everybody. So. You know, I, I think it's hard when you're at home, you must think the world's going on without you. The world is is still kind of staying the same. We want to be back in it as well. 
and we are looking forward to a time when we all can be open again. So absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, Heather. We appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great. So Ashley, I know we have a special guest here today with us. And I know, I don't know if you wanted to give a shout out. I know we have a couple of programs coming up today that you may want to talk about. Absolutely. And then we'll get to our guests. Absolutely. So folks, hopefully by now have received the Hilltopper uh, June, July edition. But if you have not received a copy, please do look to the website or to our Facebook page to see what we have coming up. Hard to believe it's already June, June 5th, I think it is today. Uh, so today we have two special programs at 1230. We have DA uh, Marion Ryan, and she'll be speaking about loneliness and scams. And later this afternoon at 2.30, we have members of the Historical Society, and they are putting on a trivia event to see what you know about the town's history. And both of those programs are open. We'd love to have you call in and be added to the mailing list. I'm sorry, not the mailing list, the registration list. And we will send you out a Zoom meeting link that you would simply click on and then boom, you're a participant in the program. So again, both of those programs are open. Just give us a call if you have any questions about registering or you could shoot me an email and we'd love to have you. Today we have a very special guest with us. We have Natalie Scott, and Natalie is our French instructor. She started teaching at the Senior Center this past year. It was one of our more recent offerings to the program at the Senior Center based on seniors' input and what they'd like to see. They wanted more language opportunities, and Natalie was the perfect choice. Uh, so thank you, Natalie. She was very willing and eager to get the classes started. So before we went into quarantine, she was teaching on Fridays at the Senior Center. And what had seemed like a seamless transition, now she's teaching on a virtual platform through Zoom. And many of her students have taken on that and are able to participate online as well. It's a very interactive class and I have the ability to be a host so I listen in and everyone's doing remarkably well and take it away Natalie if you could just talk about the class and in your experience on the other end and what it was like for you to transition from teaching in person to teaching online and then share with us your background. You have a very unique background that I think everyone would be eager to, to listen to. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, I have to say that I, I'm very impressed with the seniors. They're delightful to work with. And, um, you know, it's, it's wonderful to see that people continue to learn because as you learn and as you continue to learn, I don't think we ever grow old, you know, so it's a, it's a definite uh, formula to staying young, I think. So I'm going to start by introducing myself. So I have started working with them in January and I, I was very surprised how, how much interest we got. Uh, you know, from this class, but um, I was raised and born in Belgium. So I um, met my husband when I was at university. So I did all my high school in Belgium. I went to what we call une école européenne, which is a European school, but it's very similar to a international school, except that um, it had mostly the, the languages of, of Europe. So at the time, so they expanded because Europe grew, of course, but um, we all had to learn several languages. I'm very familiar with the concept of learning a language from the age of six. So it's not new to me because we all had to learn several languages in that school. Then I moved to Brussels to go to university, study political science, international relations, and that's where I met my husband. And so we got married after we were done with school. And we traveled the world. We lived in many different countries. And it's not until I got to England that the interest of teaching um, approached me. <laughs> I, went, I had a daughter at the time who was a toddler. And they, um, they saw me teach French to my daughter. So, so some of the parents in the play groups. And they said, well, could you teach our children? So my interest in teachers 
started in England. So I did it in England. And when I moved back to the States, um, I became certified. And um, I, I went from public school to private school to public school. I did many different schools because, as you know, it's one year contracts. And, and then depending on how we were moving or, you know, I remain very flexible. But teaching was always um, very present in my life. So this opportunity arose at the senior center and I took it because I'm like, oh, gee, I've done every, every age group. I've never done a senior. So this, you know, this would be really interesting. And as a matter of fact, I am, I am thrilled. I am ecstatic to see how, I mean, they are probably the most motivated students I've ever seen. You know, at school, you take French because you need your credits. <laughs> you need to move on to college. That's usually what happens. Um, you know, only a few are really generally interested in learning the language for the language. But these guys are so interested. They've traveled. They've been to France. They've been to Quebec. And they, they really want to continue um, exploring these opportunities of communication. Now, I have to say, because of these years of experience of teaching and the fact that I learned English myself in I've seen all kinds of different methods and I've, I've taught for different schools with different methods. I've actually uh, been able to see, because learning French when you already know how to speak French, like I did growing up, is very different than teaching French as a foreign language. And so as I teach and as you teach, you, you tend to develop methods that work best, you know, and show them how they can actually with one sentence turn this one sentence into 10 different sentences by substituting certain words. This is where we're going. And I have to say that the, the class is all about communication. So I only introduce grammar concept when I see that they needed to move further. But we don't do a whole lot of grammar. A lot of it is speaking and they speak. So I, I, we do a lot of repetition. So pronunciation is very important. Um, and so how, how would I summarize the class? We basically laugh a lot <laughs> because we share you know stories experiences and so we debrief and we kind of like you know put it in an educational context so it gives them a better understanding of the culture and what the word re really mean um we learn a lot and uh we speak and as a matter of fact i also did a uh, i have a master's in communication from northeastern and a lot of these concepts that i learned from communication, I've applied into my language classes. So it's really, the focus is really on being able to communicate. Now, when you think about communication, there's a lot of grammar that we don't use when we speak. French people, you know, there's a way to write and there's a way to speak. And for speaking, you don't need a whole lot of tenses. You don't need a whole lot of grammar. So that's the focus. It's really a speaking class, communication class. Um, I like to share some of my, my stories because I've traveled the world. I've done a lot of different things in my life. So I, I bring some real life experience into it. And guess what? This helps to memorize these things. But one of the things that we do, for instance, when we do numbers, we always start the class by reviewing numbers because numbers impact a lot of different things. It can be the cost of an item. It can be the age. It can be the date you're born. It could be your birthday when, you know, you go through customs and they verify your information. So they could say, what's your birth date? And you have to answer with, of course, numbers. So um, I always do a little drill of numbers in the beginning with even math fact. And it's amazing. I, I mean, I'm blown away by how well they do because we, you know, I've trained them. This is, this is how we, we start the day and it, opens up the brain to learning more and being in the French mode. So mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And um, I think, you know, I hope they enjoy it as much as I do um, as I teach it. So, so Natalie, I have to say that a couple of weeks ago, we had John Palmer on talking about the program and he mentioned the numbers and, and he, he really, he really loves the class. And I think that's been the feedback and Ashley can attest to this of what people are saying. They're loving speaking, they're loving, um, communicating, I guess, is, is really what you've been saying. And I think that's the biggest piece of it. It's not just rote, what we, what we might have experienced ourselves when we were in language class in, in high school and stuff, where it's like, okay, I am, you are, she is. It's much more, uh, um, I guess, personal, and, and, and it becomes a part of them. And I think that's the biggest piece of it. And it does make a difference. 
Right, yeah. And I think that um, I didn't want this class to be like a repetition of like grammar and, you know, these, these book things. I, I tried to take the substance from the book. So I, I do have a little bit of a program so they can actually build upon. And so I, I seize that out and we apply. So it's a lot of application, which makes the class really be a love, learn, speak uh, type of class. And I think that the goal of the class, we, we actually, I think the class is more than just learning to speak. We share stories, we get together. And in this time of confinement, it's really important that they stay in touch. And so we kind of travel vicariously during the hour of class. So we, you know, I bring them to, to France, to Belgium. We talk about some of the foods that, that are available when they go to France, you know, maybe a future trip you should, we should plan. So it gives them some type of, of hope. And we basically travel vicariously during that hour. So everybody, including myself, we forget about our aches and pains or, or, or the fact that we can find it doesn't feel like a confinement so that is one one objective the second of course is to learn and they always take something new away from the class so the class is a lot of review so they can keep on practicing and build the confidence but as we you know as we build that confidence we also um you know make sure that they have they they, they feel they have a level of satisfaction and then they move on to something new and they still feel like wow i'm progressing you know and they feel it like that there's no test there's no exam it's a very <laughs> laid back you know laid back class but there's some homework natalie <laughs> Yeah, my homework. So they, it, I'm not allowing them to forget for the two days we don't meet. You know, <laughs> it's just so that they, they don't mind the homework. That's the part that I find amazing. They don't mind it, and I think you know that's that's important. It's 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 fun, and exactly. even though there is some homework, it's fun to be able to get back together. And there's a lot of laughter from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, we do. I always have. I mean, I've experienced so many funny stories. I should have written a book on you know. Yeah. Funny life, okay. <laughs> but, well, there's still time for that, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. So I, I sometimes write down my things and then I lose my little book notes. <laughs> like, what, where, where was that? But luckily, I remember some of these stories. And I love to bring that into the classroom because, you know what? I feed off my audience. I, I check with them appropriately at the right time to see if you know is this hard or easy and I ask them is this hard or easy so I I can I can actually break it down to so easy that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. and if I feel they're too comfortable they want a little bit of a challenge they tell me too so I crank it up a little bit but I think that the the um the great thing about teaching and and you have to 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 love being able to because I'm very flexible so I I really always take the pulse of the class and um and I think that they, they dictate the rhythm that I have. And so mm. it's, it's so much more enriching, I think, when you can walk away and it doesn't feel like learning if it feels fun. And mm -hmm. I think that um, I'm very impressed with their, their, their memory. This is a great thing for, you know, as we age, they always say, you know, do something new, do some, you know, do Sudoku's or do learn a foreign language. And I, I have to, to thank them for, you know, embracing this it's a great opportunity they're embracing it they're rolling with it and now they're like gee i'm so glad i signed up so it's it's a it's a win for for all of us and particularly in this time of you know gloominess and and confinement and we don't know where we're heading at least they know they have these couple of hours a week where they can just relax sit back and then <laughs> enjoy <laughs> and you natalie you have students with a wide range of background in terms of some people had never learned the language when they were younger and they're just starting out and to be comfortable in a type of class where people have different abilities I think is a huge testament to you and how you run the classes. People, at least for me looking in, everyone seems very comfortable and talking and practicing their communication. So it's just great. Yeah, and you're right, Ashley. We, I do have different different levels because some people had more French than others, and some people right. continued through high school. Some of them only had it in middle school. Some of them never had it, but went to France and would love to communicate when they they go to France. So, um, I tend to work with a certain amount of words. So I present them with the words, we go over them, I have them pronounce them. So until they pronounce them really well, then we start making sentences. So, so, so everybody can jump on board 
as we go and take something away. So if I find, if they tell me, you know, I've never had French, I, I tell them no rush, it'll come and it will come, it does come. So I, you know, I will, you know, some people are more willing to participate because they have reached the level of confidence already in a short amount of time because of the background. But every everyone has a, a chance to say, and I'll ask them, I said, I know you're new to this, are you comfortable enough? And, you know, some of them will say, oh, yeah, absolutely. So they and they say beautifully. I'm impressed with the way things are being pronounced. They say it so wonderfully. And I tell them, I said, OK, you're ready to move to France now. Nobody will know you come from America. You just sound like a French person. <laughs> so it's really for me, it's very rewarding. And they, they know I will work on their pronunciation. So I think that's what maybe in their past experience was was lacking because the focus was like let's cover the curriculum you know let's get there by the end of the year sometimes you have to run through it without having them really spend the time to absorb the way things get pronounced mm -hmm. and so now they have this opportunity you know and I have to say, Natalie, I think one of the things that's, that I find exciting about this program is that it's interactive, as we said. It's not doing it a tape. There are so many programs out there and not to, mo to say that they're not worth it, but you have real-time correction of your pronunciation. You have other people that you're working off of and feeding off of and listening to. And I think that's one of the, the best parts of the 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 class that we have here and the fact that we've been able to continue it virtually. Um, I know that that's what people have said. And I know, you know, it's been very difficult for some people to get into our virtual programs and stuff like that. But those who have are really happy that they were able to either <laughs> break the barrier of their own, I don't know how to do this to, I'm going to try to do this. And I think um, that's what's been exciting to see and watch with your classes and, and with the people who are talking about it. In fact, I wanted to mention again that if you're watching right now and you've had experience with some of the programs and you'd like to talk about it, either Natalie's or any of the others, we'd love to hear from you. Again, like I've said, this is a live program, so you can give us a call at 508-435-7887, and we would love to hear from you, if, especially if you've been watching or involved in one of Natalie's classes or one of the many exercise programs that we have, and we do coming up have some other ones. Right. And it's great that we have, you know, exercise classes and we tend to think that physical fitness is only about the body, but the mind needs it too. And so this is a great, you know, mindful way to keep the whole body engaged, like exercise classes for your body, this class for the mind. Um, and, and like you said, um, Amy, everybody's assessing this information differently. And so having a live person can actually detect where people might have a little hiccup or struggle with the words. And so, um, because everybody has a different experience. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it makes the class very lively. And I think that everybody's learning from each other as well. And so that, that makes some, um, because if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's different. If you do it with the tape in a, in a reactive way, it's very different. But having the feedback and seeing everybody build the same type of confidence, even though they have different levels, is really very fun. And they're all so engaged. It's wonderful. And um, I, I just wish, you know, people would see that for themselves, but it's a, it's a wonderful program. And I'm so thankful that uh, we were able to launch it. Thanks to you guys. You know, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that this was available to us and that they had the courage to, you know, uh, tackle the technology part because that's a big step too. Not everybody is 100% comfortable with technology. And so this is a big step. So you're doing two things at once, technology and French. It's a big, it's a big deal. <laughs> but most of them have acquired this level of comfort with Zoom. It's such an easy way. Like Ashley explained it, you click on the link, everything opens up for you and you're right there. So, it, you know, I really think that um, people should take advantage of this wonder, wonderful program. Yes, and it, it's a pleasure for me to teach it. Natalie, did, did, oh, sorry, Amy. No, no, go ahead. Uh, do you think your teaching style changed at all from being in the classroom to being on the virtual platform? Or would you say the content is still the same and it feels as though you're together in a way? Great question, Ashley. So I thought at first I was I was 
brainwashing uh, myself on how I would approach my class because my class is very interactive and I do a lot of peer learning. So sometimes I create uh, games or exercises that they can work with with each other. So I just walk around and listen. Um, so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to overcome this lack of like paper and, and games? And But you know what? I figure out a routine that still keeps them engaged with questions and, and drills that I'm able to do. Like for numbers, sometimes I'll say, okay, let's take a piece of paper and a pen and crayon and papier and write down the numbers that I say. So they still have a way to, to be engaged um, be active, not just be, you know, passive listeners. They're very much engaged by writing down. Sometimes we have a quiz. Sometimes we do translation and say, okay, so I'm going to say this. How am I going to say this in French based on the words that we discovered? So, um, of course, the Blackboard is missing, but we do have a screen share. So, and I'm thinking actually for next class, since we are covering adjectives, I might just put on a little piece of a French movie on which Ken now showed me he knows how to share his screen. I might send that to him. He's going to play the video for us. And then we'll all be able to come and say, so how is such and such? Is he funny? Is he serious? Because they know how to say that. So I think that um, Zoom has actually its benefits. I think it's slightly different, but I can still engage them the same way. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it was a big discovery as well, because I was I thought I might have been struggling, like, oh my gosh, maybe I won't be able to be as exciting in the classroom, you know, as engaging. But you know what? I found ways to still remain very um, engaged and active and, and enthusiastic. And I think that, I, I, you know, it'd be a good question for them to answer. I said, oh, do you feel as engaged as you were in the classroom? Now, some might say, no, I like that, the, the real deal thing, because maybe because of the hearing because their Zoom might sometimes cut in and out. But for the most part, I mean, I checked with the class last time. They all said they had great sound, great visual, great everything. So I think for, you know, 99% of the class, it's been a very positive experience. And so Natalie, you just gave a teaser for your next class. So you'll have to see, <laughs> <laughs> they'll all come in prepared. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I do want to say to people that, you know, getting connected um, virtually has has presented challenges. I know that the staff at the senior centers working to help people overcome those. And we do have a volunteer on Fridays who does walk people through the ability to connect and um, be a part of all of these programs. And again, you know, we have so many interesting programs. We have so many exciting things coming up do check your newsletter and your our website and keep an eye on Facebook. We are trying to promote those all over the place. And as as our group a couple of weeks ago was able to attest, it's a lot of it's a lot more fun than you realize. And it's also so beneficial personally and and um, I guess emotionally personally and all of that to have that connection. I know we have a coffee hour on Wednesday mornings that people come in and they can just say, you get a whole screen and it almost looks like the Brady Bunch and you're able to wave at everybody <laughs> and, and say hi. And that's a really important thing to remember during this time where we are isolated. And it's interesting because Ashley mentioned we have a program this afternoon um, about loneliness and social isolation. So we hope you do check that out. Uh, again, Natalie, thank you for coming on. We really do appreciate having you here and all that you're doing to make the classes work for us at the Senior Center. Thank you for having me. And the biggest thing I hope again that everyone takes away that while the Senior Center is closed right now, we're waiting to open and we can't wait to see you all, we are still here. And so you can give us a call. And again, the number of the Senior Center is 508-497. 9730 if you want to try to get connected into any of these programs. So again, I want you to all remember to stay safe, continue to wear your masks. I know they're not fun, but hey, they're keeping us well and keep moving with the Senior Center. <laughs>